Hello and welcome to your own channel. Let's talk business once again. As always, I'm excited to have you here. Today in this video presentation, we are going to discuss about the complex risk platform. As the name suggests, this platform will help broker and underwriter to manage complex risk more efficiently. So this technology will be initially built on the current PPL platform. I will talk about PPL platform later. And the corporation has already taken the 40% of financial interest in the PPL platform to gain more control. So as always, there is a lot to know and a lot to discuss. So without waiting more, let's start talking business. So for those who are new to my channel, I am Ravi Shankar. I am having more than 16 years of experience in business analysis, largely associated with PNC and general insurance domain, currently practicing in Lloyd's of London. So if you have any query related to this video presentation or my previous video presentation, reach me at my Hotmail and LinkedIn profile. I'm also available on Twitter, so you can connect me here. If you want to have a copy of this presentation, you can connect me on my Telegraph channel. So let's begin. So basically what is complex risk? So complex risk is basically a platform that is intended to make the placement of complex risk more efficient. The complex risk will allow broker and underwriter more easily to place risk, which include the appetite search. We'll talk about it later. So let's see the definition, a digital end-to-end -end platform that complement face-to-face negotiation to submit, quote, bind, issue, endorse, and renew complex risk insurance and reinsurance. Well, in the blueprint one, they have not defined what is complex risk basically, but uh, this is how they have they have stated in their statement and the definition statement. This will evolve over the time from a document plus data, then data first solution. So what is happening here is right now the complex risk is largely placed through face-to-face -face negotiation by broker and underwriter. So broker has has to wait for underwriter to place this complex risk and they discuss over the table and then they discuss about all the risk properties and everything in detail and then place obviously this is having their own advantage of uh, doing the things or working closely with underwriter but this is also a time consuming and you know less efficient they wanted to increase the efficiency in this area and this is the reason why they wanted to invest in complex risk platform right now most of the data right they have a system called imr insured market repository and they have all the data placed in this system so this data is basically all the pdf files all the document files gif files images audio and video files everything here because they have uh, all this file over here it is manual intensive work so they have to spend a lot of time to see this document read this document and then drive the information for this doc so for machine or computers this is quite difficult to read this document automatically so they wanted to move from this to this where the data will be stored in the into the database table in a proper structured way so that the machine and computers can able to read this data and drive a efficient solution so this is their reason from moving from document plus data to the data plus solution so this is an interesting overall diagram so this is the complex risk as a whole in this complex risk we have a new module we will discuss about it the placement module here we have a negotiation module then customer portal data room these services are the common services we will talk about this service later and this platform can be accessed through api gateways or will have their its own ui to access this platform and broker can connect to this complex risk platform through apis or by accessing the complex risk platform ui similarly carrier can able to access the complex risk platform through api gateway now api stand for application programming interface and by this way any system can expose itself to use its services so i'll not go deep into the apis because it's a technical subject so let's keep it in a way that api will help two systems to interact with each other Going forward, why CRP is required? So basically CRP will support the sourcing and efficient placement of complex risk. As I said, they have not defined the complex risk in their blueprint one. The second thing is uh, making Lloyd's as good to market for the complex risk by making the process more simple. And third thing is efficient and transparent claim services and optimized support processes and risk insight for market participant and the customers. So how they are going to achieve all these things. So they will support the negotiation process with the latest collaboration tool like video conferencing, chat services, document collaboration tools, and they will be having a clearly defined data standard so that all the parties will follow the defined data standards to have better data quality. 
then they will be using APIs as I already said APIs API help two system to communicate with each other in a real time more efficient transaction to transaction basis they'll be having a lot of business rules to automatically check the territory specific rules tax premium calculations etc they are trying to to have the straight through processing so that they can send all the information to downstream back office systems for better placement and uh, get the things done through straight through processing and they will be deliver the ability to analyze wording using the artificial intelligence and also they will be having services where they will do functions like KYC for their customer and team money laundering check AML checks etc and sanction checks so that they can do the risk placement more efficiently. Going forward, as I said, uh, the complex risk platform will have three module, a major module, which is placement module, negotiation module and customer module. So the placement module will help broker and underwriter to structure the risk, help to visualize the placement. Negotiation module, as the name suggested, will real-time collaboration of for new business and support the efficient endorsement and renewal processes. And customer portal is to support the structure risk and unstructured customer data. So we will discuss in detail about what are these. We have a, one more thing called data room. We'll also talk about this data room in subsequent slide. So first thing first is placement module and in placement module we have uh, many different functionality on sub modules. So first one is appetite search, digital lead market placement, digital follow market placement and then we have placement visualization and pricing tool. So appetite search is basically a tool that will give broker an up to date view of which syndicate have the risk appetite to accept the risk what they are looking to place into the market and suggest which syndicate is having expertise to accept the risk so that is within the appetite search so now the digital lead market placement is place where the broker will put all the relevant information and there will be many syndicate looking this information and once the information is okay and once they can analyze this risk information they can actually uh, submit their quotation over here so here the broker is trying to identify the lead for the risk what they are willing to place into the market and once they get the lead from this uh, digital lead market placement module they will look for the followers so say for example if you have 50 percent in the risk accepted by the lead then you need to find these two followers or many followers for this risk so this digital follow market placement will help them to find the follower for the risk the third is about the placement module and the placement module will help broker to 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 visualize whether the placement is done properly and all the risk has been placed 100 percent of the risk has been placed and whether they need any sign down need to be done sign down is basically a process where broker can sign down the risk so say for example uh, during the subscription process the risk sometimes plays more than 100 percent so sign down is a process where the broker can uh, reduce the risk proportionally for each participant in the risk the fifth one is pricing tool the pricing tool will connect the market participant to third party pricing tools the risk data will follow through the platform to this pricing tool removing the need of reeking the information and get the latest quotation and the pricing for the risk Going forward, then we have a negotiation module. As the name suggests, the negotiation module will help a broker and underwriter to negotiate the risk digitally. So this module will have uh, many processes and sub modules. So we have document plus data contract builder, data first digital contract builder. Then we have a finalization to firm order, post bind processing, endorsement and renewals, and reinsurance placement linking. So we have uh, many sub processes within this module. So this module will support the rapid contract creation and efficient collaboration negotiation of terms and condition within the risk and this will be accessible to placing broker lead underwriter and the customer so the placing broker will be having the access to this module the lead underwriter will be having the access to this module and the broker will be having the access to this module and the customer will also be having the access to this module. So everyone is having the access to this common module so that they can upload the information into this module for 
better and efficient placement. It will be supported by the various communication method including the face-to-face -face negotiation through video conferencing, tablet support, voice chat support and messaging. So enhance face-to-face -face negotiation by enabling user to edit, remove and, and connect the information in a real time. Let's talk about the document plus data contract builder. So basically the document plus data contract builder will create using the document collaboration tool that will allow both parties to amend the document separately or together and highlight all the changes in the real time by providing the audit trail. So say for example in this tool we have a document and in document these two parties say for example one is broker and one is client can able to see this document together and modify this document by providing all the audit trails. So the tool will access the standardized terms and condition within the clause library. So we have a clause library in Lloyd. So the tool will access the standard terms and conditions so that broker can use those standard terms and condition and explain them to the client. Parallelly, this tool will have the data from the various other system like client system or third party system with the help of APIs so that they can also use this data and the data field will be incorporated into the final market reform contract so when when you are having all the information which is stored here modified here this information along with the information which you have received through APIs will be finally stored into the MRC contract so MRC stand for market reform contract and this is the ultimate contract which will be placed uh, to the syndicates and the syndicate will accept this information. So MRC will have all the risk information into a structured way. It's having a lot of sections. So I have already discussed MRC in my previous video presentation. I will give you a link so you can go and check what is MRC and how it is playing. So the second thing is about the data first digital contract builder. So this contract builder is also a tool. As per the data first capability, the insurance contract or the data first contract will be built using the digital contract builder tool. This tool will use the data from submission data, code details, rule engine, selection from the clause library to build the digital contract. And the contract will be built in a way that uh, all the compliance and the regulators related changes and formalities will be satisfied much earlier in the process. Now, coming back to this, finalizing to firm order so finalizing to firm order once the quote is reviewed by the broker which is already identified the market and the negotiated terms and condition it will submit the series offer as a firm order so basically what is happening here the underwriter is submitting the quote to the broker broker is evaluating the quote and then once it is evaluating the course it will send a series of firm order to to the underwriters or syndicates. The platform will tightly control the data access to ensure that the underwriter can see only the relevant information which is relevant to them. The underwriter will review the firm order which is submitted over here and decide whether to accept, reject or accept with additional term condition. So when they are going for additional term and condition, it should be agreed before the order can be bound and the platform will manage all the workflow and audit trail if the underwriter wants to do accept the risk with the additional conditions. So once all the acceptor has been received, if required, the platform will help to facilitate the signing down of the risk. Signing down, I have already ex explained. So say, for example, if the risk is placed more than 100%, so signing down process will uh, reduce the risk proportionally to all the participants so that everybody will have the right proportion of the risk. So at last, agreed version of the insurance contract will be created as a PDF and saved in the central repository for others to view. The platform will automatically calculate the taxes at the bind if there is enough structured data available. Going forward, the post bind processing is, is nothing but once the binding has been completed, the platform will provide the automatic updates to, to all the relevant participants about the sign line and will produce an automated accounting and settlement record for downstream processing. Going forward, endorsement and renewals. The endorsement and renewal largely follow the the new business processes and in terms of renewal so renewal will pull all the previous data and the broker will use the historical data to place the renewal quotation to underwriter and underwriter will review the renewal will be much faster as compared to the new business then going forward to the reinsurance placement linking so what is happening the platform will simplify the reinsurance placement by automatically generating the draft facultative placement record for a broker. 
saving the time and reduce the efforts. So linking the direct and facultative record could enable the reinsurance and brokers and seedants to able to see their overall net exposure for a given risk and that will help them for better decision making about the overall placement. So that is all about the negotiation module. Going forward, then we will have a customer portal. The customer portal can upload the information about the organization, its asset, and other risk of their business to develop the best book customer profile. And the customer portal will also help them to analyze their organization risk profile and determine which risk to mitigate and which risk to transfer. And the data for the risk they wanted to transfer will be automatically uploaded into the complex risk platform where the broker can see it. So, so here we'll be having a customer portal and the customer portal will be a part of the overall complex risk platform. So com the customer can provide a lot of information into this portal, maybe in a structured or in an unstructured way. This portal will help them to analyze their own risk profile. And once they analyze their own risk profile, so they will send the data to the complex risk platform. If you can observe here, there is a lot of opportunity to save time here because now the broker no need to capture this data again into the system the customer itself is capturing this data they know what data need to be captured what sort of data need to be provided so kind of like they are doing the part of their work and freeing up the broker for doing unnecessary work and then there will be another module called a, a data room so th this data room will be having a place where the customer can put basically all the unstructured data so like when I say unstructured data, it's kind of like a, a PDF file, uh, documents, various documents, and video file, audio file about the risk. And this data room will have the proper permission profile so that it can control who can access the data, who can view the data, who can modify the data, delete the data, etc. So that is also a part of the complex risk platform. Going forward, the dependencies, you know, what are the dependency of the complex risk platform? So first thing, as I said, it is going to build on top of the PPL. We will talk about the PPL after this slide. Then it will be having a, a downstream dependency on account and settlement, which is right now a lot of uh, manual intensive process involved here in ENS. And then it is also having a Lloyd risk exchange dependency. I mean, it's going to link to the Lloyd risk exchange also, which we have already discussed in my previous video presentation. I'm not going to spend more time here. You can pause this video presentation. I'm already having a whole video presentation on the placement platform limited PPL. For the sake of simplicity, PPL is basically a solution that is helping broker to speed up the placement process by adopting the digital channels. Going forward, let's talk about their implementation plan. So they are having a plan transition phase, which is almost over. It was till October 2019. And in this phase, they complete the plan design ramp up the document plus data solution and uh, data first solution they did a lot of ideation over here they call a lot of service provider in order to understand how to address the future of Lloyd program as a whole then they have a phase one which is from jan to december 2020 and in this phase they are going to early build the document plus data solution and the prototype for the data first capabilities phase two will be from jan to december 2021 and in this phase they will be talking about first production release of uh, document plus data solution and early build of uh, data first solution for the specific risk class. They have already select uh, Marine for this. And the phase three will be from January 2020 onward. And in this, the first production release of the data first solution and roll out the additional line of business integrating with the automated back office operation services. So this is their plan. So now the recent update over here is uh, during the transition process, they have highlighted a couple of important things. They said that by the end of 2009, the Lloyd syndicate were placing more than 70% of their risk electronically, which is good for the complex risk platform. More than 100,000 risks were placed across the market and 200,000 endorsements were agreed, which actually helping them to save time and money and specifically for the broker and underwriter so no need to evaluate everything manually going forward the lloyds corporation has already bought 40 percent of stake in ppl so that they can control this ppl and expedite the entire complex risk platform in a better way then in phase one they will be focusing on building an implementation of apis for simple integration into the platform so their priorities are a court bind firm order and endorsement to to bring this into the system through apis and then 
they have a mandate target for Q1 2020 is 50% of the submission and 80% of the place risk should be done electronically so that they can facilitate the electronic placement in a better way and also if you see from the from the phase one point of view building api will allow the simple integration to the platform that is one thing development of new capability on top of the ppl covering the endorsement and firm order that is another thing what they are trying to focus in phase one usability improvement of the ppl and that a lot of defect fixing will also happen in phase one and a commitment of re-platforming of the current document plus solution. So they have already identified a couple of vendors here, DXC, Accenture, Wipro, TCS are a few of them. So when you see from earlier release of Blueprint 1 and the 26 Feb update, so they don't have much changes over here. The plan broadly aligned with the original plan, what they have earlier published. Except one thing, so they have pushed the data first solution from 20, 20 to 2021 so this is the only change what they have indicated in list as update so that's all for this video presentation i hope you have learned something from here and i'll be making few other video presentation in this series so till then bye bye and have a good care of yourself stay healthy stay positive and uh, please don't be panicked with this uh, covid epidemic all the best and god bless you Bye-bye.